It's fine. Uh, so now we're going to um, listen to a talk by Davide Macera from the University of um, Roma Tre. Um, and as we see, the talk is going to be full, spe full spectrum Anderson localization for general model of a disordered quantum wire. Thank you, Davide. OK. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Giulia Maria. Um, okay, so this is uh, um, this talk will be about uh, a um, uh, problem I'm working to with my advisor, uh, with my main advisor, and Sasha Sodin from Queen Mary University of London. And uh, uh, before um, talking speci specifically about, about this uh, problem, I would like to uh, give a quick introduction. Uh, uh, a general introduction about the mathem mathematical framework uh, uh, of quantum mechanics and uh, so basically of the uh, theory of uh, uh, self-adjoint operator then uh, um, explain what is it uh, Anderson localization um, uh, and uh, therefore I will talk a little bit uh, uh, about uh, oops my internet connection isn't stable okay let's 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 cross finger um and then um do go specifically to the um problem uh, we are studying um okay so uh well uh, quantum mechanics um uh, is a very big has been a very big motivation uh, for mathematician to uh, push the boundaries of mathematics uh, since, since the since the beginning and uh, especially this is especially true for functional analysis that is the mo most na natural most used uh, nowadays um, uh, setting mathematical setting uh, for for quantum mechanics uh, so here you see uh, the uh, beginning of the second chapter of the famous uh, book by Paul Dirac about mm, um, paragraph it's about linear operators uh, that uh, as may uh, as you, you you probably have encountered in uh, a course of functional analysis and uh, so um, uh, there is a very natural set setting that where a you have a Hilbert space that is the state space and linear operator as we will see self-adjoint linear operator uh, are observables uh, so when uh, you want to model uh, um, this is for uh, basically a generic uh, um, a generic uh, uh, quantum system when you want to uh, model a disorder quantum system uh, it's natural then to consider um, uh, linear operator uh, uh, having some randomness in them. Um, this, uh, this, uh, um, the trying to model this 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 type of uh, of, of stuff uh, basically uh, led to the birth of two um, uh, quite big, especially random metric theory, and now uh, two ent entire uh, new areas of, of, of mathematics. So uh, yeah, we have a random metric theory that was um, started by uh, Bigner in his in a famous paper from 1956, um, uh, where he introduced the uh, so-called Bigner matrices that are used uh, are random matrices used to model um, the nucleus of a very heavy um, uh, atom. And that also there is random operator theory that is the infinite, in, infinite dimensional version of random matrix theory. Uh, actually, um, usually random matrix theory, you take uh, uh, big, uh, uh, the, 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 the limits for, for, for the matrix getting big while in random operator theory, you usually take finite dimensional approximation to uh, get your results. So uh, uh, these two areas are very interacting and uh, are actually two, basically two approach to, approaches to the same thing. And um, so uh, before, uh, yes, so let's be go, do a speed run into sp spectral theory uh, uh, 
uh, I mean, to, to, to um, refresh or to introduce uh, um, the basics of, of this uh, discipline. So uh, you, you probably have already uh, seen a, uh, what is it, a, a linear operator on uh, Hilbert space. It's basically the uh, infinite dimensional analog of a matrix. Um, um, when uh, for a finite uh, dimensional vector space. Um, so uh, then you can uh, uh, define the uh, adjoint of an operator. I'm simplifying here because uh, uh, um, you usually uh, linear operators are not defined on the whole Hilbert space. Uh, 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 so you have to select a, a domain of definition and then to define the adjoint, you have to define the domain of the adjoint. But uh, in, in the cases, I will consider uh, this problem basically don't, don't arise. So uh, you, you can usually take a dense domain in the whole Hilbert space and everything works. Um, okay, an operator that coincides uh, to, with its adjoint is called self-adjoint. So the adjoint is basically the um, infinite dimensional analog of uh, uh, transposing, uh, taking the uh, uh, conjugate transpose of a matrix. Okay, uh, um, so um, there is this Dirac for Neumann axiomatization of quantum mechanics where observable are uh, self adjoint operators uh, and uh, states uh, are um, elements of the Hilbert space. Actually, states are elements, if one has to be precise, of the projectivization of the Hilbert space, but um, I'm not, uh, I mean, uh, th this is oversimplified. So uh, we will not, uh, no, we will, we won't be too um, uh, uh, precise. And uh, yes, I mean, this is uh, basically what I say. Then you can define the spectrum that is uh, uh, the, the set of uh, number for which uh, T minus uh, uh, G, the identity is not invertible. You can uh, check that in finite dimension, this is uh, um, uh, equivalent to uh, G satisfying the eigenvalue equation uh, with which you are, I think, all familiar. And uh, yes. <laughs> This is uh, what I said now, um, but the, the, the thing is that in infinite dimension, the spectrum can be something more uh, rich, something richer, something uh, uh, funnier. Uh, you will have the, um, you won't have just uh, like uh, it happens for matrices, a uh, linear combination of, of points uh, with uh, in, in on R or in C where, uh, uh, you have you you have yes this point with uh, uh, a integer number attached that uh, uh, describe the multiplicity. You have an actual measure um, that might have a pure point part. Uh, so you you might have uh, some points that have positive mass, and those points will be. Um, uh, will be literally again values, but you can also have some uh, continuous part. You can have uh, counter sets. You can have uh, a lot of uh, uh, weird things. And okay, so we, here we have the definition of an again value uh, uh, that is exactly the same. Um, uh, pretty much the same uh, that in the finite dimensional case. Uh, except that uh, you need to uh, uh, be take care that the function is in the Hilbert space or in the domain of, of the operator in case you are taking some uh, more complicated operator. Um, uh, so, I mean, this is just to, to, to tell you that uh, spectral theory in infinite dimension is uh, uh, similar but different to what you have in finite dimension. Okay, so why are you interested in, in, in spectral theory of this operator? 
or uh, self um, joint operators. So we, we said that self joint operators are the observables in quantum mechanics. Uh, but what is really relevant is the, the spectral decomposition. So it's a set uh, of eigenfunctions and uh, their spectrum. Uh, so the spectrum represents the set of a visible energy um, at which the observable can, can be uh, observed. Here, here there is a, a typo. Uh, um, okay, uh, yes, I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, um, I mean, energy levels can be imaginary numbers since we define the game values for um, uh, complex uh, number, uh, no, because uh, for a self-adjoint operator, uh, the spectral measure is concentrated on air, so the, spe the spectrum is real. And of course, you can have uh, this. You have this, the exact same property for the symmetric matrices. You will remember, re remind, I mean, remember from linear linear algebra course that symmetric matrices have all real eigenvalues. Okay, so these are eigenvalues. Uh, what what, are, what about eigenfunction? Eigenfunction are uh, exactly what uh, um, represent the um, probability measure uh, of the um, of the observable, the probability density of the observable uh, described by the eigenvalue, and. Uh, um, yeah, if you, for example, have uh, an, oper an observable, a Schrodinger operator, that it's an observable, an operator that usually describes an electron, uh, what its eigenfunction at energy E will represent uh, the square, actually, the, the modulus square, will represent the probability of finding the um, electron in a region, uh, uh, in a certain region. So, um, you integrate uh, the square of the wave function uh, on that region, and you will have the probability of finding the electron uh, there. Um, okay, so now we, we we are entering in something more uh, on top. So um, what what I mean, what I'm studying uh, enters. And so, um, uh, what is it a random lattice operator? It's just an operator that acts on the Hilbert space of the summable uh, series, summable uh, sequences uh, that are uh, lattice valued, where, I mean, um, this lambda is a lattice, uh, usually a subset of ZD, but it can be also, for example, an hexagonal lattice or uh, something more complicated uh, and of course it, it is random uh, so it, it has some uh, random parameters in in, in it uh, so let's uh, take some example the the most famous example is the 1d anderson model uh, you have uh, the Hilbert space is the space of l2 from z to uh, to the real this is the um, operator uh, so this is uh, um, uh, the uh, so-called discrete Laplacian on the, just the difference between two two uh, uh, not consecutive. I mean, uh, the difference between the function valued in two points and uh, uh, a, a, the um, potential. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I had the random variable multiplying the, the, the function e, e at, at site i. Uh, okay, the, this model describes an electron mo moving on a chain of atoms subject to an, an IID random potential. So you have a chain of atoms uh, where the, uh, there is some disorder uh, that makes uh, um, uh, basically maybe probably some impurity or uh, the atoms are different elements uh, you can think in many way and this uh, generates a random potential and the electron uh, uh, it <coughs> um, the electron is uh, um, <coughs> 
influenced by this random potential. Then, okay, we have the Anderson model on the strip that I like to write in this way. So you have uh, the Hilbert space of function from Z to uh, RW, uh, to, to RW, W is the width of the strip. And then you have uh, um, this operator that is pretty much the same thing, but you here you have vectors, uh, uh, W vectors in um, RW, and the uh, uh, VI are IID random Jacobi matrices. Uh, Jacobi matrices are just matrices uh, with one, um, ones, uh, tri diagonal matrices with ones on the uh, latter side diagonals and IID random variables uh, in the in the main di on the mi main diagonal. Uh, okay, here you have an electron moving on a thin foil of atoms, so something very uh, something very thin, very long, and uh, with some width, but the width has to be uh, uh, much smaller than the length. And then you have the Anderson model on ZD. I'm talking pretty much, I mean, these examples are not very variegated, but this is why, because my, the operator that I'm studying is uh, somehow different. This Anderson model, um, these Anderson models have the uh, kinetic energy, a, kine a, whole, a kinetic term that is a Laplacian and basically models an electron. So a particle that has not internal geometry plus uh, uh, a random multiplication potential. Uh, so there are, this uh, is known, uh, um, okay. Okay, let's go further, then I will comment on, on this. Okay, this, is, this describes the obvious thing given these two. Okay, uh, so what, what do we want to know? Uh, uh, I think that I have to move up this thing. Um, so we, we want to know is if this the, 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 the model described by this random operator is uh, an insulator. So if you um, uh, let it pass, let, let, uh, I mean, if, if they trap, manage to trap the particle, a particle that try to, tries to pass through the, the, the medium, or if they are conductors, so the, the, the particle can move uh, um, uh, through the medium without uh, uh, too many problems. Uh, so um, uh, we know that uh, um, an eigenfunction represents the probability to find our particle in a region. So, uh, I mean, you can uh, um, say that so if this, uh, if the eigenfunction or at some energy um, is uh, very concentrated in a finite on a finite support, so is for example decay exponentially, you say that the, the material is a is a um, is a um, it's a uh, insulator or that the uh, operators, the corresponding operators, uh, um, uh, undergoes spectral energy localization with localization L given by the inverse of the exponent uh, of the uh, exponential decay rate. And this happens with probability one, uh, as you have randomness and yeah. Uh, okay, I, I may do a comment on the Kolmogor of zero one law. So why such an event may have only probability zero or one, but uh, there is, I think there is no time for this. So, um, okay, so we, we can say, okay, this is a good definition of, uh, um, of, uh, of, locally, of uh, uh, localization of uh, a random medium being an insulator. Uh, we know that, uh, uh, the wave function is uh, concentrated in a, a small region, but there is a problem that this region might depend on the time we uh, take the measurement. This is actually my actually 
be something uh, a little bit strange because you don't just have uh, i mean uh, you don't just uh, look at the to to see to 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 to, to um uh, say that some material is an insulator you have to somehow consider the the dynamics of this this electron moves not only uh, that you can uh, at a given instant of time uh, at a given instant of, of time is uh, i mean you 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 have the electron with tight probability localized in a region you know you you can have uh, an electron um, you can have, have that the wave function for any instant is localized is localized in a region so decay exponentially but the support so the 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 point where you have the the bump moves around in time this is something that can happen when you apply the 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 evolution uh, so uh, in order to get a, a better de definition we need to, to describe the, the the evolution of of a wave function uh, um, under uh, uh, quantum dynamics so uh, there is the very famous schrodinger equation that doing so uh, probably you have all heard about it is this equation that you can read here and uh, i mean you can uh, uh, write down the solution in this case in this easy case where the operator doesn't depend on time um, pretty in this uh, in this way uh, and then you can uh, um, you can uh, have uh, do uh, basically uh, define some form of localization that depends on uh, takes in account the dynamics so uh, we say that an observable has dynamical localization if uh, um, on some energy interval if uh, this relation is satisfied so you have that the maximum um, for t uh, greater than zero of this expectation over the randomness of this uh, um, uh, bracket that basically represents the the probability of uh, um, passing from the state x to the state y to the state to for a wave function that is a, a direct delta concentrated in x to a direct delta concentrated uh, in y uh, and this is exponential in the distance between x and y there is this mysterious p of i of t that is what is called the spectral projection this is oversimplified i uh, this is a quite technical object but basically is uh, uh, telling you that everything that is happening it's happening in the energy range uh, in the in the energy range given by the interval i um, okay so now let's talk about what i'm doing with with sasha and we are considering this operator so we have a sequence of uh, iid uh, w times w random matrices Another sequence of uh, W times W symmetric random matrices uh, um, such that uh, they are independent uh, on the LI, at least uh, when, uh, um, uh, okay, this has, should be a J, not an I. Uh, sorry, so uh, VJ is independent on LI if uh, J and I are different. And uh, uh, if we denote the measure sampling uh, these matrices, um ah, okay uh, sorry uh okay um i mean the operator is uh, is is the following you have uh, quite kind of similar to the schrodinger operator but uh, the schrodinger operator on the strip but instead of having just uh, the identity matrix here uh, you have uh, um you have these uh, uh, matrices this random matrices so you in some case have randomized the kinetic energy of the model and here you have a generic uh, symmetric uh, uh, matrix rather than a jacobi matrix a more general potential uh, this model represents uh, a, 
a particle with internal degree of freedom. So if you have identity here, you have the Laplacian that represents an electron that is a particle that is not that has no internal degree of freedom. If you uh, put these matrices, these are called opping matrices. These matrices represent the the, the passage from one uh, uh, state, uh, one internal state, to another internal state. So you can have to think to something, for example, a molecule, a particle that has internal geometry, and uh, uh, and these matrices uh, represent the, the change in time of this uh, of this geometry. Uh, it's called generalized Wagner orbital model. Usual Wagner orbital model, you take uh, some more specific form of L and the, and the potential. And it's called orbital model because the W degree of freedom represents the, can represent the orbitals of the, uh, uh, some orbitals, so some, yeah, uh, some excited state that the particle might um, uh, run to. Um, okay, uh, so uh, we are generalizing to this case a theorem proven by Klein, Lacroix, and Spice uh, in the case of Li being the, the, the identity. So basically, in the um, uh, Anderson model on the strip and uh, Vi being Jacobi matrix. Yeah, so in the under, for the Anderson model on on the strip, and this is the the theorem. Uh, um, uh, so, okay, uh, before I introduce you, uh, wrongly introduce, uh, too early introduce the two sampling uh, measures. So you have those two sequence of matrices and have their sampling measures. Uh, the, the probability matter with, with, with which you sample them. And uh, so you are assuming that these two measures have uh, um, some uh, uh, fractional uh, fractional finite fractional moment, uh, some finite fractional moment, and for the opi matrices, also the inverse has to have a, a, a finite fractional moment. Then the support of the probability measure doesn't preserve any proper subspace of the uh, vector space of the uh, R to the W, the, the, the vector space where they uh, naturally act. And the sect uh, and the, the support of the probability measure of the this L uh, I uh, this uh, nu is the probability measure of the optimal is not of the potential has to contain uh, a uh, sorry this uh, uh, this is the the is the opposite this is this nu is the um, uh, probability measure of the potential not of the optimal is the optimal is you have very 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 uh, relaxed condition has to contain a uh, multiple over rank one projector, basically a matrix with all zero and some uh, uh, scalar on uh, uh, some point of the main diagonal. Then you have spectral localization. We also prove uh, we also prove that uh, you have also dynamical localization with one half of the optimal exponent. So if you, for example, um, um, you have a uh, um, wave function that is uh, mostly uh, concentrated in, in, in this uh, area, then uh, the, the, the optimal thing for dynamical localization is, is that is remain uh, uh, still concentrated here. But uh, you, um, ah, okay, you, you can see the, the black or good, but you can also have it to move ar around another area that uh, is uh, where you still have uh, dynamical localization because it, it doesn't escape away but uh, it's not the optimal the the, the uh, i mean the the optimal uh, thing that you can have uh, uh, i mean it's not the 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 shortest scale the shortest uh, localization length that you can have so we have it uh, um, for one half we we can prove it for one half uh, we need to be able to prove it for uh, the, the optimal exponent. So for the um, the, the, the the full log the, the full uh, spectral localization length, but the, the proof is still uh, has still to be checked carefully. Uh, and now let, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the proof. So then I, I, uh, we will uh, uh, finish. Uh, the proof is uh, basically uh, based on the 
um, so-called transfer metric approach. So you can start from the eigenvalue equation and uh, you can uh, 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 see that this eigenvalue equation is basically equivalent to, to this, uh, uh, to this, uh, to, to, to this equation. This is just a rewriting and uh, uh, like call uh, T X uh, E the, the matrix, uh, uh, this matrix uh, that you see uh, multiplying this vector. And uh, um, uh, but if we iterate the procedure, you can basically tell uh, the value of a negative function far away, uh, knowing the value of a negative function at some close point, for example, in zero one at, at the origin, let's say, at some, yeah, at some point that you fix. And uh, um, then basically studying the, uh, you can, I mean, this is not obvious actually, but you can imagine that uh, studying the, the asymptotic behavior of the game function uh, boils down to uh, studying the asymptotic behavior of this random matrix product. Um, uh, we actually prefer to have simplicity matrices for a bunch of different reasons. So you can take this matrix in cell that in the asymptotics, it's uh, completely equivalent. And so you are considering a random work on the symplectic group. Um, okay, so uh, what can we say about its limit? There is this multiplicative ergodic theorem that if you uh, have any sequence of random matrices uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, G, in the linear group, then uh, uh, it exists a random matrix, uh, th this limit that you see, uh, okay, maybe there is a true, a true at the, uh, ah, yes, you have to take account that the fact that you are multiplying. So there is probably a, a true here. But by the way, the, the, this limit, um, ah, no, 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 sorry, there is no true. No, 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 it's correct. This limit exists and it's a random matrix. The matrix is random, but its spectrum is deterministic. So you have uh, a matrix that uh, is, uh, as uh, I don't know if, uh, uh, maybe it's too, too small there, but by the way, is uh, a diagonal matrix multiplied by two random unitary matrices, uh, a random unitary matrices and is transpose. And uh, if you take the logarithm of this value that you, the deterministic value that you get, you have uh, uh, the so-called Lyapunov exponent. And Lyapunov exponent are actually what rule uh, the decay of the eigenfunction. Uh, um, uh, so what we want to uh, know, uh, so uh, yes, the mid Lyapunov exponent that coincides just to the to the W. To remember that the the, the size of the matrix is two W times two W. Uh, so the W Lyapunov exponent is uh, what, um, and since uh, the matrix is symplectic, it coincides with the difference between these two exponents. Is what is what uh, rules the rate of decay of the eigenfunction. And so in order to prove localization is uh, uh, basically uh, boils down to prove that this uh, quantity, uh, the, the difference of these two is uh, uh, strictly larger than zero or that the Lyapunov spectrum is simple. So that the, 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 the Lyapunov exponent are all these things. And uh, um, yeah, this is <laughs> what I, uh, Saying and but there is an, a purely algebraic criterion uh, when you have a run work on some semi simple Lie group uh, to to check if uh, uh, it's a, um, uh, Lyapunov spectrum is simple and it's called the uh, Goldschein Margulis theorem. It's a very famous theorem in ergodic theory. Uh, Margulis, I think, last year won the Abel Prize uh, partly uh, uh, also for. I think uh, in part also for this this result. So if G is a semi-simple matrix Lie group, now I'm going technical, but uh, 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 I mean uh, the, there is no no alternative. Uh, if um, if uh, phi n is a product of uh, random matrices uh, sample according to some probability measure mu, 
And if we call the multiplicative semigroup, that is the, the, the possible product uh, of, the, uh, of elements from this, uh, this support uh, without taking uh, the inverses. Uh, and then uh, if this is Zariski dense, so algebraic geometry enters here in, in, in this semi-simple uh, matrix Ligro, then the Lyapunov spectrum of the matrix uh, with probability one, I, I uh, should have specified, it's simple. And uh, uh, so you are saying, okay, but so your problem just, uh, you have just to solve this algebra problem to compute the Zariski closure of your transfer matrix and everything is, is fine. You have proven spectral localization, but not really because this works for any fixed energy. Uh, what you want uh, is to know that fixed um, any randomness uh, for uh, all the energy simultaneously, you have that the eigenfunctions are localized. And uh, uh, um, if you take even a very simple case with two by two matrices, you can say that if you um, consider all the simultaneously all the energy, you uh, all the uh, you you put the para the energy parameter you let it run on the whole uh, real numbers the param you will have ex exceptional sets ex an exceptional set of values with probability one that is dense in air for which for all this set the Lyapunov exponent is zero even if uh, this random matrix product that is basically the random matrix product the transfer matrix product of the uh, 1D Anderson model, uh, even if uh, uh, satisfies uh, Gorchheim Margulis. Uh, so you have, uh, you need a probabilistic argument to say that we, I, with probability one, the, uh, this exceptional set of energy, if, if it exists, because it's not uh, given that it exists, uh, is this joint from, from the operator spectrum. So we have this two-step strategy algebraic step, uh, checking the, that uh, uh, Goldschein Margulis condition is, is, is um, are satisfied. Probabilistic step, uh, check that uh, the, 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 the exceptional set is this joint uh, from the spectrum with probability one. Uh, the, the, okay, so uh, we have a strategy. I will briefly talk about the, the proof strategy of these two steps. Uh, the first one is basically this. So Goldshade did for it for the Anderson model on the strip in 1995. So uh, me and Sasha, we, we are trying to basically, we, we are imitating uh, what uh, he did. I have no time at all to explain in detail. I don't think I have time. Uh, I have very little time. Maybe we start a little bit later than one quarter, one quarter has passed, but uh, okay, um, it's based on uh, strange object called Jordan algebras, and we are trying to adapt to our case that is more complicated. So there are some technical challenges, and then there is the disjointed from the exceptional set. Here we are extending an approach employed by these two Zvetlana uh, Gitomieskaya, uh, that is a very famous uh, functional analyst uh, in uh, uni at University of California, um, Irvine, and uh, her PhD student uh, do to reprove uh, after many years uh, one-dimensional uh, 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 localization from the 1D Anderson model with a bounded random potential. It's something that has been proven long ago, but they improved with this new technique. And one of the main ingredients is this very nice um, anti-concentration property for the diagonal block of the green function that uh, this is just the inverse of the uh, restriction to a finite interval of the operator. Here I forgot some uh, uh, brackets, but uh, it's uh, it's this uh, minus the, the energy. This is called the resolvent or the green function of the operator. And this was uh, somehow challenging, but uh, this is I mean this is the my, my ingredient of this uh, this step. Once you have this, you can prove that the spectrum is very difficult to uh, basically to 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 to, to uh, hit 
with uh, something random even if uh, uh, with some something random and uh, okay this is all uh, uh, i'm sorry for my stuttering but uh, uh, and sorry for uh, going uh, a bit late <laughs> Thank you very much, Davide. Okay. Um, thanks. Does uh, anybody have questions? May I have a question, please? Sure. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Davide, for your interesting talk. Uh, I have a very basic uh, question about the definition of a spectrum. Um, yeah. As a part of the spectrum, I was wondering if uh, there are points uh, lambda such that uh, T minus lambda inverse, it exists, but uh, uh, is not bounded, the inverse, or uh, is just like yeah. uh, for all the points that the inverse doesn't uh, exist at all? Ah, the inverse doesn't exist. Well, um... I mean, it's it's not invertible. Means that uh, ah, okay. So uh, okay. So you are saying that the inverse is uh, is a um, um uh, well, basically that is what the the spec the, the the spectrum is is the is the set of points for which uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I mean. Okay, let, let, let's go back to, to, to okay. the definition. So you are uh, basically saying, okay, uh, yes, uh, where, where are we? Uh, a linear operator is, uh, no, uh, okay, the spectrum, yeah. Okay, it's not invertible. So, okay, mm -hmm. yes, uh, you actually, you, uh, all right, you, you, you may have a -bond, an unbounded uh, uh, inverse. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, okay, it doesn't exist uh, um, at all. Uh, uh, well, uh, I need to, to, to think a little bit about it. This mm -hmm. is probably something uh, uh, in basic spectral theory uh, okay. that uh, you okay. can uh, uh, in basic spectral theory that I I forgot. But uh, okay, okay, so, okay. Uh, no. uh, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, um, actually if you have uh, a natural eigenvalue, uh, I mean, if probably if you have a pure point spectrum, uh, this is not just unbounded, but it doesn't exist at all because if you have that the operator satisfies the the eigenvalue equation. Uh, you have an actual singularity in the in the in the in the in the um, you have an actual singularity uh, on the at the denominator so uh, you may be able to regularize it somehow like taking uh, some integrating but uh, uh, against some uh, 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 some uh, bump function but uh, Okay, it's uh, uh, yeah. This is uh, uh, yeah. Probably, I mean, my functional analysis professor is uh, not happy. Would not be happy for this answer. Answer, but okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, David. <laughs> Other questions. Uh, I would have a, a short question. So, um, yeah, sure. So maybe maybe I can quickly comment on the thing that was asked before. So I think what you use is that do you assume the operator is is closed, and then you can use the closed graph theorem for the inverse to show that this actually ah. continues. But um, okay. what I wanted to yes. what I wanted to ask is why. So you, in your uh, definition of localization, you have this exponential decay. Is this is there some reason why you yeah. take exponential decay and not like polynomial or anything else? Is this just convenience um, or? Okay, it's uh, well exponential decay. It's uh, uh, something that uh, actually is. Uh, um, I mean, 
exponential decay is very fast. This is the, the reason. Um, uh, it's it, it basically pretty much the same uh, difference uh, uh, between uh, the, uh, the, the eigenfunction is a probability density. So you are basically saying that this probability uh, density function mm -hmm. is light tailed if you say that it's exponential. Mm -hmm. If uh, it was polynomial, it, it would have been heavy tailed. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much the same distinction that you have uh, here. But yes, uh, most people, uh, yes, most, I mean, uh, if it's not, if it doesn't decay at all, it might not be integrable at all. So it might not be a negative function at all. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so some kind of decay, you, can, you have to have some kind of decay in order to, in the eigenfunction. If it's fast enough, it is a, a signature that the electron is uh, basically trapped. Mm. Uh, Thank you. I, I, I hope this answers your, your, your yeah. question. Thanks. Anybody has one last question for Davide? Okay, so um, okay. thank you, thank you very much, Davide and Elise, for the talks. Uh, thank you, everybody, for for joining. And um, if you didn't do it yet, please sign up to the mailing list to be always informed on the next talks. And yeah, um, we'll see you in two weeks on Friday.